My name is Professor Ian Chappell and I'm head of the School of Dentistry at the University of Birmingham, UK. I'm frequently asked the question as to why dental care professionals are more likely to have experienced or be exposed to COVID-19 uh, than the general population. And it's a very difficult question to answer because actually the data is not that convincing that dental care professionals are more susceptible. So the theory is that um, because of the close contact between a dental care professional uh, and a patient, then the likelihood of the dental care professional being exposed to an aerosol generated from the respiratory tract of the patient, either through the patient talking uh, or through um, the patient coughing, or perhaps through the types of procedures that dental care professionals undertake uh, many of which involve the generation of aerosols, that dental care professionals will be more susceptible to um, becoming infected with COVID-19 through their occupation. Um, now, it's not actually as simple as that because the, the dental care professional team wear masks and they wear goggles and they wear uniforms and protective gowns. And so they wear PPE or personal uh, protective equipment that, that is very, very effective at protecting them from infection by uh, respiratory viruses. The difference, however, is that um, when a dental care professional traditionally has interviewed a patient and undergone a consultation, they are generally sitting within a metre of close proximity and having a conversation with the patient without wearing a mask because that is something that we feel creates a barrier to the, uh, the communication and the understanding and, the, and developing the relationship between the patient and the dental care professional, and that's very important. So the question is, by sitting having a conversation with a patient, um, is the dental care professional exposed to what we call an aerosol generating exposure as opposed to a procedure? So an exposure is talking to a patient within close proximity, whereas an aerosol generating procedure is when the, uh, the care professional is, is creating an aerosol, either through an intervention that they're undertaking on the patient um, or not. So the classically in dentistry, if you have your teeth scaled or if you have a high speed drill that is used, you create an aerosol. But of course, that aerosol is created from clean water. And it only becomes contaminated when it mixes with a patient's saliva, assuming that patient is currently infected with the virus. And there is a huge dilution effect between the aerosol and the amount of saliva that gets into that aerosol. So it's very, very difficult to know what the level of exposure is to, uh, of the uh, dental care professional to uh, the virus, even in an infected patient when performing an intervention such as that. We've just completed a, a study, quite a large study, at the university, which is a collaboration between the dental school and hospital and our clinical immunology service. And we have measured antibody levels to the COVID-19 virus within the bloodstream and the saliva uh, of over one and a half thousand dental care professionals from across the Midlands. And these are people working in a dental practice setting, uh, as well as in a hospital and a community setting. And it includes dental nurses, as well as dentists, hygienists, therapists and receptionists. And the headline data so far, and we only have two thirds of the data analysed, is that the prevalence of antibodies in that population is around 17%, which sounds quite high compared to a general population. Uh, in the Midlands, the data is somewhere between 6 and 10%. The problem in analysing the data is that the assay that we've used is highly sensitive, and it's a different assay to the one that has been used to measure population prevalence. And so it's really hard to compare that data. But just to put things in perspective, the comparison would be a study published by the clinical immunology team in Birmingham uh, just last month, which showed levels of antibodies in housekeeping staff within the Queen Elizabeth Hospital of around 34%, twice the level that you would find in our study in the dental care professionals. And interestingly, in the staff that had been involved in working in the intensive care units, where you'd expect the, the exposure to be at its highest, those exposure levels were down around 13 to 14%. So similar types of levels to the levels we're finding in, in our dental health professional group. 
And so for us, the key thing is what happens to the antibody levels in those patients, in, in those practitioners as we move forwards. And so we plan to follow our dental care professional team uh, over a three and a six month period when we can look to see if there is a difference between those those dentists and dental teams working prior to lockdown when dental practices and dental surgeries were closed and going back to work wearing proper personal protective equipment and wearing masks during that consultation to reduce the risk from aerosol generating exposures as well as procedures. And if we get no new cases uh, after three or six months of going back to practice and wearing the, the personal protective equipment, then that will provide us with a huge degree of confidence that actually dental care professionals are probably at no more risk, in fact, at less risk during work than the general population. But clearly that needs to be determined and needs to be shown. Uh, and there's a lot more water to flow under the bridge yet. So to summarise, there is an assumption that dental care teams are at high risk of exposure to the COVID-19 uh, virus uh, through their occupational exposure. But using the right personal protective equipment and having the right protocols in, in place to protect uh, both the patient and the practitioner uh, and the practicing team really uh, from the virus, then it will be interesting to see whether that putative or proposed increased risk is actually reality or whether it's an assumption uh, based upon the nature of dentistry.